Mod Organizer 2. My preferences for installation, setup, updates, and settings. Welcome to Gamer Poets and to modding my way. Sit back, relax, and pause when needed. You got this. Requirements. Have at least one game properly installed and launched at least one time so Mod Organizer can detect it. Next, open the MO2 mod page. Scroll down in the description and you will find some more requirements. It's okay if these requirements change in the future. Just download whatever the mod page tells you to. Click the C++ link. Save the file to your desktop. Double click to launch it. Agree through the steps. If you already have it installed, you'll get a pop-up. Just ignore it. Do the same thing for the second link. Download. Launch. Follow the prompts. And if it's already installed, simply close the window. Leave the MO2 mod page open. Installing MO2. Scroll up and select Files. Download the main mod organizer file. Launch the executable that was downloaded. Accept and agree. At the Location window, Browse. Create a new folder anywhere you want, not in the Program Files directories. I create a new folder on my modding storage drive. Then write out the full name because I'm OCD. OK. Next. Next to the Components window, Start Menu Options or Preference. Create a desktop shortcut. Next, Install. Check the box to launch MO2. Finish. If a register window opens, select Yes. MO2 is installed. Setting MO2 up to manage a new game. Every time you want Mod Organizer to handle a new game, you will go through this process for it. Select the Instance Manager button. Create new instance. Next. Select Global Instance. At the next window, you can tick this box to see all of the games that MO2 is capable of managing. Untick it to only show the games installed on your computer. If you don't see your installed game, select Browse. Navigate to and highlight the game folder in question. Select Folder. If a Game Edition window pops up, select the correct option. Name the instance whatever you like. Next. Check all the boxes. Next again. Selecting a folder where the data should be stored. This location is where all of your mods, profiles, and the other fun stuff for this specific game are stored. Again, choose any location you like. Just not program files or game directories. The default location is also fine, but what I do is make another folder right next to my MO2 installation folder, and I call it Mod Organizer 2 Game Instances. Select to highlight it, select folder. Next, and finish. MO2 will close and reopen for the game that you just created the new instance for. At Category Setup, choose what you like. I choose to do nothing because I like to customize everything on my own. You are now ready to start organizing and to start modding. Every once in a great while, MO2 may have an update that is not incorporated into the main build. Here's a clip from an older video of mine about how to handle this. First, close MO2. Open Nexus. See if MO2 has update files. If there is one, in this case there's an update for Skyrim, GOG, and Epic Game users, download it. Open the archive. In a second window, open the MO2 folder that we created earlier in the video. Plugins. Drag the file from the archive inside. Replaced when asked. And if there isn't an update file, great! You don't have to do anything extra. This section is how I personalize MO2. You don't have to know any of this to use or to mod with MO2. These are just my preferences, and I explain what I choose to show you how flexible this app can actually be. Take your hand off the mouse and keyboard. Sit back and relax. This button here is Settings. Inside we have some tabs. General. I check Compact List. This keeps the Downloads window a little cleaner for when you have a lot of items here. I also check for updates and update the beta versions, which are self-explanatory. Theme. Style. Let's you change the appearance of MO2. I choose Dark. The changes won't apply until you select OK. The Path tab. The base directory is the location we choose in the previous section. What I do here is click the ellipsis. Make a new folder. Title it after the game. Drag the other folders inside of it. Then highlight the new game folder. Select folder. OK to refresh. Yes. Ignore the error. And then go back to the path tab. 
Now I make sure base directory here is pointing to the folder that I just made. I do this so when I have MO2 manage other games, I can keep everything organized here by title. I leave downloads, the mod archives that you install from Nexus and elsewhere, caches and profiles right where they are, which is inside the base directory. That's what this percent thing means. However, I change the location of the mods folder, which contains the unpacked mod files that are actually used in game once a mod is installed, and the overwrite folder to be on the same drive as my game, which is a much faster drive than my other ones. To do this, I click the ellipsis to the right of mods, go to my game drive, create a new folder, name it mod organizer 2 dash mods and overwrite, open it, create another folder titled after the game at hand, open that, create one final folder here, and title it Mods. Highlight and select it. Then do the same for Overwrite. Game Drive, MO2 Mods and Overwrite folder, open the game folder, create a new folder and call it Overwrite, Highlight, Select. And that's it. OK, yes to confirm, and ignore the errors. I leave the rest of the tabs alone. If you change these paths, as I have just done, you want to do so before we start modding a new game because things can get a bit messed up otherwise. At the bottom of MO2's left pane, you'll notice an overwrite folder. This is a fantastic tool, but it can be very confusing if you don't know how to use it. Check out my overwrite folder video. I promise it's worth your time. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you soon.